Welcome to the channel. If you're brand new to me, welcome, welcome, welcome. I um, want to make sure that all systems are go. So let me know how everything sounds in the chat. I was demoing some things earlier today, so I uh, hadn't had a chance to kind of test everything before I jumped on here. So just let me know that you all can hear me, see me well. Um, if something does go a little crazy with the audio, just let me know so I can make a quick transition. Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, uh, my name is Monty Weaver, and I'm here to help you navigate through digital tech and social media. And so what I wanted to do in, in this live stream, in this video, is kind of really walk you through some different setup scenarios, walk you through uh, some workflow type of ideas to really help you just up your game when it comes to live streaming and video. So whether you're at home in your home office, uh, whether you have a dedicated space, whether you got to uh, set it up and then tear it down or churches, you know, I love working with individuals that are leveraging this power of video and so we're gonna do some Q&A for sure I definitely want to make sure I answer some questions I got a lot going on here today to kind of show you different scenarios different workflows that are going on so you're in for a treat so if you got questions start lining up your questions and start dropping those in the chat make sure I say hello and acknowledge some people I saw Miss Sharon what's going on Miss Sharon I'm glad you'll be able to be on for a couple minutes Good to have you on here. Alexander from the Philippines. Awesome. This is why I love being on YouTube is because you get to connect with people literally across the globe. Um, so shout out to the Philippines. Uh, what's going on, JB Benz, Beans? I, I never say it right. I never say it right. What's going on? Uh, IRC Adventures. Good to see you again. You're in Canada. Awesome. 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 Cool. So let's kind of get into it tonight a little bit. Um, wanted to share with you guys some of the some of the things that it takes and some of the things that you want to think about as you're going going live uh, live streaming putting on your video productions what's going on Terry I see you from Michigan and so that's kind of what we're gonna focus on tonight um, and I'll and I'll walk you through what's going on here and as you guys are thinking of ideas and thinking of those questions definitely type those in as we get started okay so Kind of, I'll kind of do a behind the scenes shot first to kind of set this all up so you understand what's going on. Uh, this is the camera that I'm talking to you all on right now. This is a DSLR Sony mirrorless camera and the microphone you're hearing is going to be this top mic during the entire broadcast. I'm not going to switch microphones unless my audio starts to go a little crazy, okay? So that is that is the main shot that I always typically work with and so if you're doing video and live streaming and you want to have multiple camera angles you still want to always have your default you know answer to the problem if something goes wrong so if I switch to that camera and something is going wrong I, I want to have some type of dedicated main shot that I always can rely on and this is what this shot is right now okay so we have this camera, then we have a camera behind me, directly behind me, which is a point tilt zoom camera, which is also known as a PTZ camera. Now, that PTZ camera is ideal for churches or conferences. So if anybody is doing a conference still um, and you want to stream your conference, those point tilt zoom cameras, PTZ cameras are a great option because they allow you to control them with a remote, okay? You can zoom in, you can zoom out, and you can set up presets all with a remote. So it's great for, it's great for churches because if you, there's only a small group of people that's actually operating everything, you try to make things as easy as possible. And so being able to have multiple camera angles one camera, multiple angles, 
is something that you can definitely pull off with a PTZ camera. So I want to share, show you just kind of what that looks like. Okay, so I literally have my remote in my hand and I'm going to zoom in right here on my computer and this Stream Deck device. Okay, and I've already preset it up on my remote. So literally when I hit the number two, it's going to default to where I had already set it up to go. So this is great if you're, again, if you're in a church setting where maybe uh, the speaker is in one space at a certain time and then you know at another certain time during the service they're in another space, you can already preset this up so that the control, the person that's controlling it doesn't even have to really think. They just know, okay, I need to hit button one for this, button two for this, and button three for this. Uh, one of the churches that I work with in Washington, D.C., they use one one camera just like that in the back of their uh, sanctuary and literally as service happens they can literally hit the button and transition to where they want to go um, and what they want to show on the screen okay so that's camera two um, behind me then I have this camera over here to my left side now this camera is the exact same as the camera in front of me exact same camera Sony a6400 and the reason I like to use identical cameras is because the lenses are the same um, it really helps you when you transition you're not gonna really see it so much in this office space because my lighting is horrible um, it's only set up really for this main camera but when you use cam two of the same type of cameras multiple cameras with the same lenses on it you don't have to do a lot of color correction and trying to get the colors to match and align. Now you'll see it a little bit different here just because I have blue going on behind me here and I have my lights directly on me. So you'll notice a little bit of difference in the color, but the lenses are the same. And so in a larger scale environment, this works perfect. You don't have to think about, you know, going in and tweaking settings all the time. Um, now on this particular camera over here i am using a different uh, shallow depth of field i'll put it that way for for my beginners that are on here so that this is a little bit different because i use this to record um i love recording everything i do those of you all that are content creators let me know in the chat uh, let me know in the chat how you all are using video and where you're at um in your video process what's going on lady c i see you there um how did i overlook you how did I overlook your name? I see you there. Um, but I use this camera off to my side to record everything. So if you're a content creator, one of the easiest ways to put out more content into this, this internet world, the cyber age that we're in, is to record everything. And so earlier today, I had a meeting with, uh, with a client. I had the camera on the whole entire time because if I drop nuggets, if I drop some good information, then it's a lot easier to take out the card, the SD card, and put it into a video editor or send it to the editor and just grab some clips, some video clips, and put out to the world, okay? So if you have two cameras, that's gonna be something that you really wanna consider. Uh, even if one of them is built into your laptop, um, there's still ways that you can to record outside of just streaming, okay? Now, if you're already streaming with one camera, you're doing way better than most people, but being able to stream with uh, multiple multiple cameras is something that you can take uh, advantage of as well, okay? So that's this camera, camera two. I forgot that I was not talking to this camera, I was talking to that camera. Um, and then the camera in the back um, is another PTZ camera. So I have two PTZs in the back, uh, but that's a box camera. That camera is more of a stationary camera. It doesn't it doesn't move left and right, up and down. It only zooms in and out. Um, um, and this camera over here, it actually does all the zooming in and out, back and forth, left and right. So you have multiple types of PTZ cameras, just like you have multiple types of DSLR and mirrorless cameras, okay? Um, Linda says she's a content creator. Awesome, awesome. So when it, when it comes to cameras, a lot of people say or ask, what's the best camera? It really depends. It depends on your budget. Um, if you're a brand loyalist like me, and I love all things Sony and all things Logitech, then you kind of 
you know, sway toward the brand that you kind of want to stick with. But the, the, be the two best cameras that are kind of the YouTube standard cameras out there for anybody that's creating more YouTube content or you like the the you like how these YouTube videos look from a, a from a, a camera perspective is the Canon M50 and the Sony series and um, the Sony's have a lot of them the A excuse me 5100 the A6100 the A6400 that I'm using now the A6500 the A6600 so there's a lot of them and it just really depends on what you like like I said and some of the features that I have to have on my camera, especially something like this style, is a flip-up lens on top. So I need to be able to see myself. Um, it's already weird enough talking directly to a lens where there's nobody there. I cannot see any of you all. I'm literally depending on the chat. I'm depending on looking at myself to make sure that I stay in frame so I don't drift off to one side or drift off to the other. So having... Uh, a flip out lens is something that I really need to have on my cameras. Let me zoom in so you guys can get, see what that looks like. Now you'll notice that on some cameras you'll have the lenses, um, or the, not the lenses, but the, uh, the screens either on the top or they'll flip out to the side over here. One thing with, with video, um, is that you really want to is you, is you want to look at the lens, okay? So you want to look at the lens when you're talking. You don't want to look up at the screen. But if you do look up at the screen, you're still looking front facing, which is great, versus the, the monitor being off to the side. Because if you start looking off to the side, it's a lot easier as a viewer to notice that you're looking off to the side. So something to just, just to keep aware of as you're talking, but as you get more and better, with video and talking on camera, then you get used to talking at the lens. Even now, I'm still, like literally, I'm talking right above the lens. I'm kind of looking up over the lens and looking at myself, kind of looking at my mannerisms, kind of just checking on me, make sure I stay in shot and in frame. So um, something to keep in mind when you're looking at cameras. Um, I saw some questions come in here real quick. Uh, Linda says, are these user-friendly for beginners? Um, DSLR and mirrorless cameras, they, they have a lot of buttons associated with it. So you will kind of, you will you don't have to use all the buttons. I'll put it that way. You don't have to use all the features, but there are some that you definitely want to, to leverage depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, one of those would be the shallow depth of field look that I know a lot of people like is how do you make that blurry background? And so you do have to understand but once you set it, you don't have to understand it. You just set it and forget it. But you do have to know that the what's called an f-stop, um, that allows you to have this blurry background effect versus if I switch to camera two, I have no blurry background effect at all. And that's all because of what's called the f-stop setting, okay? Um, you also have another setting that I really like for, for people is to make sure that you have your ISO, it's called ISO, ISO, um, all the way to the lowest setting, especially in a dark room, because it helps enhance that, that shallow depth of field look, look, that blurry effect. So those are the two things that, um, as a beginner, that you'll definitely want to know when you pick up your camera, you buy your camera, uh, but you definitely do not have to use all the settings. I am not a camera guru. I don't know all my frame rates and all that kind of stuff. But if you if you want to really get into that video creation piece of it, certain uh, settings allow for slow motion effects. So when you want to do those slow motion effects, it, it definitely makes it easy when you edit that you don't get that, that jittery. It's more smooth, buttery, slow motion effect. Uh, but that all comes in time with kind of learning some of the deeper details of your camera settings. Um, Shannon says, oh, you're in Maryland, but live in PA. Okay. Getting set up for live streaming to do virtual church and a weekly Christian show. Awesome. I am loving, loving the churches that are embracing this virtual uh, because you don't even have to have a big space now. You know, churches, um, it used to, well, it, 
in some churches. It used to be fill up, fill up inside, fill up inside. But now you're you literally have a global audience. Um, and as things go back to normal, you can still leverage this video. Uh, one of the things last night uh, at my church, one of our, our elders, she was teaching and I, and I told her, I said, let's try to embrace the, the YouTube audience, you know, because there, there wasn't going to be a lot of people physically in the room. And so if anybody that speaks, all my ministers and pastors, those of you all that speak, it's a little different talking to a camera and connecting with the camera if you've been so used to speaking and getting that interaction and engagement with a group of people in a physical setting. There's nobody there to clap for you. There's no one to say amen. There's no one to encourage you along. There's no one to, to smile at you. And there's also no one to frown at you either. But the, leveraging video and really just you know, talking to the camera as if the person is right there is something that takes a little bit of practice, no matter how many times you've spoken before. It's different when nobody is literally in front of you. So um, doing it, doing a virtual church is something you could definitely leverage. Um, and then as things go back to normal, you just keep it up. You know, you try to make these things simple as possible. So as people get used to showing up for your virtual church, when things go back to normal, if you have a storefront or something like that, it's not a hard transition back because the reality is some people aren't coming back into the four walls anytime soon and we still need to connect with them. So how can we do that? We definitely leverage these social media platforms and still talk back and forth to them. Just like uh, Pastor Alex is in the Philippines. It's crazy, you know, and I'm, in, I'm in Virginia in the United States. And so around the world, if I was just focused on a physical location, I would never connect. I could never help him out. But, you know, if you have a message, you have, you have a story, if you have a business, if you have an opportunity, this is the this is the avenue to do it and all we want to do is just kind of make it look good so people that can sit here and enjoy us and and learn from us and we teach them and all that good stuff um i'm going to say your name incorrectly but thank you thank you um you said nice setup thank you um you have covered this already but is it necessary to have a capture card for canon cameras getting ready to start live streaming at church thanks so Canon recently came out with a firmware update that allows, depending on which Canon you had, um, so definitely check out YouTube for Canon uh, software updates or Canon firmware updates because they, they came out with software that allows you to easily take your camera and turn it into a webcam. So you don't need what the capture card. So let me grab one of those real quick. So you don't need a capture card if that's the case for your specific camera. I know the Canon M50s, I know it works for that. Uh, so definitely check out some of the YouTube videos around the people that have the Canon devices. So that would definitely save you money from buying one of these. So um, I, this is probably one of my favorite capture cards. I got to move my face out the way. This is the cam link and it's still blurry. Okay, that's the cam link, just the USB. And then I did a recent YouTube video on this one too. This is a off brand but it's still a hdmi video capture card is way less expensive than the cam link but that's that'll be your alternatives if that software doesn't work for you uh, should be able to just plug it right into your computer and be good to go um irc adventures i was typing a question on looking directly in the lens but you answered it awesome <laughs> Lady C says, do you suggest the mic be mounted on the camera or if someone is using Yeti on their desk, uh, uh, will that work more social sense? Okay, so I, depends on the microphone. So the microphone that I'm using right now, this microphone up here is a shotgun microphone that's built for being on top of a camera. But this is a newer model, which also has USB that can be mounted on my desk and I could connect it physically to my computer and just talk to it physically that way. So you don't have to, you don't have to run your audio through your camera. Your audio could come in straight from your computer if you want to. So for example, if I wanted to talk to this camera, I don't have to necessarily buy a microphone that I have to mount on here. I can definitely use whatever I have. So you already have the Yeti. 
So for this example, I'll pretend I wanted to use my Rode microphone over here. And I could use this microphone. I'm not going to switch over to it. But I could use this microphone and talk. And you see the visuals coming from that camera. So you definitely can use uh, a desktop microphone sitting on your desk if it's closer for sure. I, I want to use that microphone, but I always have sync issues for some reason. Um, and that's because I got all this, this stuff going on over here and unplugging and showing people all the time. But yep, you can definitely um, do it that way. Um, IRC Adventure says, do you find it hard talking without a teleprompter uh, for staying on point? Um, yeah, <laughs> only because I get easily distracted trying to answer questions and then I start going down these rabbit holes of answering questions and then my teacher mode kicks in. Um, so in a live setting like this, I won't use a teleprompter. There's, there's no reason for me to use a teleprompter per se because I'm not going to follow a script. Now, I will have talking points that are kind of off to the side. Now, today I don't have any talking points because I kind of already knew what I was going to talk about. But if it's something like an, a new idea, like a new YouTube video that I'm about to create, I definitely have talking points that I want to use. Um, and I'll kind of just outline it a little bit. I've been doing video, live video enough now where I'm just more comfortable just going straight from the top of my head um, and talking. But I did have, I do have my teleprompter for sale. Let me grab that and share. Because I wanted to use, and I don't know, I might, I might go back to it. So um, I got this for sale on the website. So let me drop the website in there now that I finally have it up and going. Um, so I wanted to do a teleprompter because a teleprompter allows me to script out everything so I have all my ideas down, which is great. I don't like writing at all. Um, I'll read in a minute. I don't like the writing aspect of it. So that's the main reason I don't use this. I, I literally bought it and never used it. But if you're brand new to video or maybe maybe you, you're not comfortable behind the camera yet, this is the, using a teleprompter is a great idea because you don't necessarily get stuck on looking at the lens. You're literally reading the words as they're coming in front of you. Um, and this particular uh, teleprompter, this can put your, you can put your phone in it. So if you have a, a camera, a DSLR, a mirrorless camera like this, this literally attaches to the front of the phone or to the front of the camera. So if I get a little bit closer there, you can see it has a little hood cover and it comes with an app. So you can write out your script anytime, anywhere. Um, so this using a teleprompter is something that you definitely can look into. Um, but like I said, if, you, if you're if you're a natural speaker, it might slow you down. It might throw you off a little bit, but it's something that's uh, definitely worth looking into. Let me grab this store. Um, so I'll, I kind of threw out a teaser um, on Facebook uh, because a lot of people ask for equipment that I have. And so I am uh, getting rid of some used equipment and getting some new equipment. And then there's some equipment that I get just to test and I never have a plan to use it. Or in this case, like I literally just don't have, um, let me zoom out. As you can see, I don't even have space for anything else to use up here. So um, I put together a storefront to uh, give you guys access. And if you want to purchase any equipment that I do have, and I'm going to do my best to keep this updated on a regular basis. So let me make sure I find the site for you. The site is live. I will start getting stuff shipped out on um, on Monday. So I'll put in here. I kind of took this idea from another uh, live, uh, another Facebook uh, community that I follow. Um, matter of fact, the camera that's back here, I actually bought that from them. <laughs> um, and then on my desk, or not on my desk, in the shelf back there, I have a PTZ controller. So it's an actual physical joystick that controls the camera that's sitting right behind me as well. So um, 
as you as you as you figure out your style, as you figure out your kind of workflow, um, there's definitely equipment that you'll start off with. So, um, you know, I have never tried to go out and buy everything all at once. There's there's still a lot of pieces in this room that I want to swap out and change. Um, for example, my lights, these are very low end lights. Um, they they can't auto adjust, so I can't change how bright it is on my face. Like I know this light in particular, it bounces off me really hard, but I can't really change and adjust the light. So I want to I want to uh, change those out. But you know, there's no need of buying everything if you don't necessarily need it. So you buy it once you need it. Um, so things like that, I um you know will eventually get upgraded when I upgrade it. Whoever you know is getting into the process of uh, live streaming and wants to upgrade certain things, they can definitely do that. I have this nice lamp right here that charges my phone. It does the exact same thing that I use as an additional light as well. Um, I will, because I definitely want to get over here and talk about this stream deck and this laptop as well. We'll make sure that uh, any other questions you guys have here. All right. Okay, cool. Let's talk about, I don't think I missed anything. <laughs> I'll autograph it for you. I'll autograph it for you. All right. Let's talk about um, live streaming software, okay? Uh, right now, I'm using a software called Wirecast. Uh, this is a uh, production level type of software. You do need a computer uh, to run it, either a, a laptop, a, a physical desktop, a Mac, whatever you want. Um, you definitely cannot use it on a tablet or a smartphone, anything like that. Um, these production level softwares allow you to do a lot more in terms of customization, flexibility. Um, you, you can you can simulcast at the same time. You can kind of save money on certain softwares because you just simply don't need them. These softwares kind of do everything in one setting. Um, so I'm going to share with you the screen on here. Make sure I got. I had something turned on in the background, but I don't know what it is real quick. So make sure I turn off these audio settings, um, screen capture, I got something turned on. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. So this is kind of the back end of what Wirecast looks like. This is how I'm controlling the live stream right now. Um, now, Wirecast is not the only program out there. Just like cameras, you have multiple different types of softwares you can look at. Um, most popular video on my channel right now is that live streaming for churches using OBS. OBS is a free software that does a lot of the same things. Um, it, you, it's a free software, so there are some limitations on it. Um, for example, Wirecast, I have a little thumbnail so I can kind of visually see what's going to happen. I can create my own scenes on the fly. Uh, so I really love the interface and some of the flexibilities that you can do with it. Uh, the countdown timers that you see me running, you know, literally, um, it's just a scene. I bring in my different elements. I bring in uh, audio source, my music. I bring in uh, a countdown timer, which I create in Wirecast. I bring out a little circle graphic, which is just a video file because everything is just an element, you know, so you can literally create whatever you want to create when it comes to putting on these productions. Um, and then you'll see that I have down below different screenshots. Now, the reason you're not seeing multiple camera angles is because I'm running all my cameras through a switcher device. So you're not going to see it here. Um, and then at the very bottom, I can have all my audio levels coming in. And then you can see on the right hand side, just trying to monitor you all as you guys are chatting. Uh, and kind of paying attention to that. So that that workflow along with your software is something that you just want to make as easy as possible because you you can see that like there's multiple things going on here in the background, um, the the behind the scenes, what what, what people don't see, you know. Um, and so if I can make it easy to look at the camera, make it easy to look at the comments make it easy to switch the screen for what you all see. That's what you want to do when it comes to your videos. Don't create something that's just so complicated that um, you feel overwhelmed or it's too hard to follow. Or if someone else is, um, especially like at churches, if multiple people are going to 
uh, operate the setup, then you know you want it easy so everybody can do the same thing. So keep it simple, but you can definitely keep it simple and still do a lot with it, okay? Kind of takes me over here to the laptop and the stream deck. So this is what I want to share with you all. I did an unboxing on here uh, a couple weeks ago, a week ago, something like that. Uh, and it's just another way that you can improve your overall workflow um, and speed up things and program things ahead of time. So I'm loving the stream deck, by the way. Okay. So let me do a wide shot, make sure I didn't miss any questions coming through. If you guys are just joining and you have questions, definitely make sure you ask those in the chat. All right, let me turn on this again. Now, I already know that the stream or my uh, my video switcher is not going to be enough because I already have four cameras being used and I need more space. I need more space. Uh, this device is offline. Okay, come on. Caps lock is on. Okay. All right. This switcher is great, but I only can put in four cameras. So I already have four cameras plugged in. Um, sometimes you, you all see me on live, especially on the Facebook side. Then I have my laptop plugged in. I'll have two cameras plugged into my switcher here in front of me. Um, I have two cameras plugged in. Sometimes I'll have my laptop plugged in. Sometimes I'll have my iPad plugged in if I want to draw. Um, but right now I have all four cameras plugged in. So I got to share with you a little bit different way of how to do this. Um, Jay says, which speed I have to set OBS for internet? Um, so you don't set a speed for OBS per se. Uh, depend Go a little bit deeper in that question, Jay. I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to do. Um, if you're talking about internet speed, then you want at least 10 gigs upload. Um, your download is not as relevant um, because we're not downloading data. We're trying to send video data up and out to the cloud. So 10, um, 10 gigs up is or megs, 10 megs up. Um, that's what you want for upload speed. Inside of OBS, there are some settings for your frame rates, and I can kind of show you what, show you what that looks like. Um, but at internet speed, you want at least 10 going up. Okay. All right. I'm going to switch over here now and zoom in on laptop and stream deck. Now, these are operating independent of everything else that's going on right now. Okay. So I want you to kind of turn on your mental hat. If you only are operating with a laptop device and that's all you have, maybe you have an external uh, microphone like Lady C said, maybe you have a Yeti microphone or uh, a Rode desktop microphone. I want you to kind of put that hat on because this laptop is independent of everything else you see up here, okay? Um, the Stream Deck is the only thing plugged into this laptop. Now this Stream Deck is a way to very quickly uh, program shortcuts into your computer, whether that's websites you wanna go to really quickly, whether that you wanna operate your OBS or your Wirecast really quickly, literally with the click of a button versus having to click all around your screen. So that's the purpose of this device. So I'm gonna share with you uh, some of the things you can kind of do with it. All right, let's zoom in a little bit here with the PTZ camera. See, All right, that's a preset. I already knew I was going to zoom in there, so um, that's how that works. So on the Stream Deck, I have program keys already in here, okay? So for example, if I wanted to go into my... Uh, uh, let's go with my Dropbox account, okay? I literally can create a button file to go to Dropbox. So instead of trying to remember my logins and let's say you forget your website, you can literally program a key. And so now it'll go and open Dropbox and I lost my internet connection for some reason. Uh, why well, I dropped the internet? Oh, I was hot spotted on my, I was hot spotted on my iPad. All right, so let's do something that doesn't require internet today then. Uh, let's jump into Fillmore. Fillmore is a, is a program that I use for video editing. 
So all I did was click on that button and it automatically opens up the program for me, which is awesome, okay? That's, that's at its basic level. This thing can open up programs for you, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and close this because I wanna deal with OBS, some live streaming, because that's what we're talking about, live streaming and studio setups today. So I have a button for OBS. And on the Stream Deck, what you can do is create folders, okay? So I'm gonna click this to open my OBS folder. And there's another button here that I created to open up the program. So I'm gonna click it and you'll see OBS will load up on the computer here in a second. All right, and that's Restream error. Don't worry about Restream. So now that I have OBS opened up, I have all these little presets made out for what I want to happen. So if you're familiar with OBS, then you, you know that you have your scenes and your sources. And so what you can do is program your scenes and your sources and then literally connect it to your Stream Deck, which is super, super easy. When I use the word connect, that is actually too harsh of a word for how easy this actually is. Um, so I can connect my countdown timer to it. So I literally hit my countdown timer. So as you're, as you're live streaming, you wanna make things super easy. So if you literally can click a button and you, can, and you have your countdown timer go, you can kind of get in the frame of mind that you need to be in. You literally could do it with a click of a button and then once you're ready to start talking, you can just click the next button and go to your next scene, okay? Now I have all my cameras showing all connected to my other computer, so that's why you don't see it here. But I literally can bounce between scenes that I create ahead of time, okay? All of these are created ahead of time. Lower third options, all with the click of a button, okay? And so once you set this stuff up, that's why I love setting it up one time. Um, the way you kind of want it, the workflow is, is something that you can easily put together uh, once you kind of have an idea of what it is that you want to do with your video, who your audience is, which platforms do you want to live stream to, uh, what equipment do you already have, what can you work with. Um, because there's so many different ways that you can do it. You can do it manually. I literally just was clicking buttons on the first part of this video manually, and then you saw me clicking buttons automatically to make things happen on the screen. So live streaming is something that you can definitely do your own way because there's so many different ways and so many options to do it. Um, <laughs> Lady C says Filmora has been taking me through the paces. <laughs> Filmora is, is, a, is, a, is a pretty cool platform for video editing. I think it's one of the more simple platforms for editing. That's the one I've, I've gravitated to to kind of knock out things quicker. Uh, Adobe makes a lot of uh, programs as well for video editing and uh, Photoshop and all these programs. So the videos that you see posted on my YouTube channel, uh, the editor that I use, he uses Adobe Premiere, I think it does. I think that's what he uses. Uh, but I think Filmora is more of a simpler program because you don't get overwhelmed by so much going on. Um, never heard of the Stream Decks. Thanks for covering laptops. That's what uh, we are using for YouTube and OBS. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and as far as laptops too, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you have a laptop capable of streaming. Uh, you want at least an i7 processor. Uh, you can get away with an i5 if you're using pro live streaming programs like a StreamYard that's web-based, or if you're using something like a BeLive that's web-based, you can get away with an i5 processor. But if you're using software and you're doing all the heavy lifting on your computer, you definitely wanna look at at least an i7 processor and 16 gigs of RAM, just so you have enough space to kind of uh, your computer has enough room to, to buffer and can, can handle everything. Uh, one of the things that I have on, on the Stream Deck itself uh, as, a, as a button that's programmed is my CPU usage. So right now you see it's at 2 3%. So this is something that you're going to want to monitor when you're live streaming is how, how much CPU you, are you using because the more that you use, the more... Uh, the, the more up other things you can't do because you don't want to overload your computer. 
So for example, I'll show you here on Wirecast, you probably won't be able to see it very well, but in the top section of Wirecast, um, if you look where the green button is lit up at the very top, and then you go over to the right, all the way across to the right, the last item is showing my computer CPU, and I'm at 41% right now, 39 to 41%. So the more that I, the more that I would try to like open up programs or try to share videos, all that stuff would add to the CPU. And then eventually your computer just won't be able to handle it. So definitely want to monitor your CPU, especially if you're streaming, um, because it, it definitely plays a big factor in, in pixelation issues um, and jittery issues, uh, drop frame issues. So you'll run into a lot of issues if you're maxing out your computer specs. So you want to give yourself enough room so your computer can operate properly. Um, Lady C says the only thing that is not, was not easy with the stream deck was finding where. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't call me out on that. Don't remind me of that. <laughs> yeah. So those of you all that were on here as I was trying to set up this stream deck, I could not figure out where the power, uh, where the where the cord connected to, and it was like literally behind it. Like I think they hid it from me on purpose, trying to get that thing straight. Um, IRC Adventure says, I also have a stream deck and love it for editing um, and hit film. I haven't heard of that one. I'm going to look that one up. Plus it on Wirecast as a switch uh, when needed for the ATM. All works smooth together. Yeah. So that's what I'm I'm really loving about this. And I love the, the fact that I can set this, this stream deck up for two different profiles. Uh, one, I can have a profile just dedicated to um, the computer or the... Uh, dedicated to the laptop itself and then I can take it out and connect it to the desktop and have it programmed to do things on the desktop too so that's pretty awesome um, same thing with this mouse uh, I just did the, the video on this mouse and uploaded it this week um, got a brand new mouse and this thing is Bluetooth all the way across so I can hit um, right now it'll control switch over to two so you guys can see it better Number two, I can control my laptop. And then if I switch over to number one on here, I can control my desktop over here. So my mouse is moving right up there. So, um, and it, again, this is just, these are just things to help improve your workflow versus try to add to your clutter. You don't want to add to your clutter. You want to make things simple. So if I can use one device to operate two components, it's a lot easier than using two of these for two different components. Okay. So things like that just help speed up the process, speed up the process. All right. Any questions that you guys have that I didn't cover that you want me to kind of cover, or if there's something you want me to demo, in real time. I forgot to put up my little lower third today. My little lower third right there. So if there's anything you guys want me to kind of demo or walk through, uh, let me know in the chat and I'll do that um, before I start to shut it down for the day. I have a video that I'm working on now for lighting. Um, so you guys will see that one soon. Um, and that's just going to talk more so about um, how to kind of let yourself better, um, uh, breaking up, um, the space behind you. So if you have no lights behind you, then you can see the difference. I kind of intentionally did this as well. So you can see that dark space here. Um, if I'm sitting in the dark space and I had all the, those other blue lights out, it would look way different than having some type of light back there to kind of break it up, um, and let you stand out. Same thing with light in front of you. Uh, different ways to kind of do that as well so i do have um that video being edited so it'll come out early next week it'll come out early next week all right cool no questions in the chat awesome 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 all right i hope you guys got some value out of the video if you're brand new make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that bell notification that way you get Notified every time I go live, every time I uh, update a new video. That way I can answer it for you. Uh, IRC Adventure says, do you use Tyler and Wirecast or are you using graphics on ATEM? 
I use neither right now. I create my own graphics. Um, yeah, I create my own. Titler, for some reason, is very, very, very slow for me on the computer. Um, and ATEM, I still haven't figured out the workflow I want to use for it because I've got to pull it up and graphics and switching. So i um, trying to figure out my workflow for that one. So if you got some suggestions on that, definitely let me know. Because I, I, I use a lot of video type of things. And with the ATEM software, it's only uh, just a graphic interface. And so I don't want to bounce back and forth too much if I don't have to. So good question. Good question. Cool. All right, you all have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll see you on the next video that I upload here on YouTube. And definitely stay tuned. I definitely plan to do a lot more YouTube lives. Um, and coming up with a schedule that works well for me and also for you also. Um, if you guys like mornings, evenings, afternoons, let me know if there's specific days of the week that work best for you. I'm going to try to look at all your comments and everything uh, to figure out a day and time that I can, I can jump on here consistently and share, share information with you in a real setting because I think there's nothing like um, being able to get some answers in real time. So you guys have a great one and I will see you on the next broadcast.